In this how-to video, we will be demonstrating the proper procedure for replacing a mechanical seal and setting the impeller to wear plate clearance on a MP pump's Flomax pump. If you have noticed the mechanical seal in your pump leaking an excessive amount, then changing the mechanical seal may be required to correct this issue. During this video, we will show both the disassembly and assembly procedures, and we will start the process at the point in which the pump has already been removed from the system. Disassembly Loosen the drive sleeve clamp bolts. Remove the pedestal assembly by loosening and removing the four bolts that attach the pedestal assembly to the adapter. Lift the pedestal assembly up and away from the drive sleeve and adapter. Remove the drive sleeve clamp from the drive sleeve by pulling the drive sleeve clamp off the end of the drive sleeve. Remove the pump adapter by loosening the six bolts or nuts and lifting the adapter up and pulling it away from the housing. Remove the impeller drive sleeve assembly and the rotating element of the mechanical seal by pulling it out and away from the housing. The stationary seal face can now be removed from the adapter by turning the adapter over and using a piece of wood or a screwdriver on the driver's side of the seal face and driving the seal face out of the adapter bore by gently tapping on the end of the tool. The rotating element can be removed from the drive sleeve by working the seal face and bellows assembly back and forth while pulling it from the drive sleeve. In a pump that has been in service for a long time, the seal bellows may have become bonded to the drive sleeve, so care and patience should be used during this process to prevent damage to the drive sleeve or oneself. Assembly one of the most important steps to a proper mechanical seal installation is to ensure you are working with parts that have been properly cleaned and inspected prior to use. Items that should be cleaned and inspected are the drive sleeve. The drive sleeve should be clean and free of burrs, corrosion, grooves, nicks, or pits that can provide a leak path around or under the elastomeric bellows or damage the bellows during installation. Scotch-Brite or a similar cloth can be used to clean the drive sleeve and remove any minor imperfections prior to reassembly. The seal bore. The seal bore in the seal housing or adapter should be free of corrosion or pits that would make it difficult for the elastomeric cup or o-ring to seal the bore. The mechanical seal. Faces should be checked for cracks or chips that would prevent the faces from having a smooth, flat mating surface to seal against. The elastomers. The bellows, cups, and or o-rings should be checked to ensure there are not nicks or tears that would prevent the elastomer from sealing properly. It should be noted that if you have an older style Flomax pump prior to November of 2011, your pump will utilize a gasket to seal between the housing and the adapter. If you have a new style Flomax design, your pump will have both a gasket and an o-ring to seal between the housing and the adapter. The gasket areas. This area of the adapter should be inspected to ensure the sealing surface is clean and free of any corrosion or debris that would prevent the gasket from sealing properly. Inspect the gasket for any rips or tears. For a newer design Flomax pump, you should also inspect the O-ring groove in the adapter to ensure it is clean and free of any nicks or burrs that may damage the O-ring and prevent it from sealing properly. Once these items have been inspected, seal installation can begin by lubricating and pressing the stationary seal face into place in the adapter or seal housing. At MP Pumps, we use P80 rubber lubricant in all mechanical seal installations to aid in installing the elastomeric components. When installing the stationary seal face, ensure the side of the seal face with the groove or dot is installed first or down into the adapter bore leaving the polished side of the ceramic face up to mate with the rotating seal element. When installing a standard carbon ceramic and Viton mechanical seal, pressure no greater than you can apply with your thumbs should be needed to install the stationary face. This face should never be hammered into place. Be sure that it is seated squarely in the bottom of the bore. Installing the rotating face on the drive sleeve will require lubricating the elastomeric bellows and the drive sleeve with P80 rubber lubricant and then pushing the rotating assembly into place with the spring down towards the impeller. Do not compress the rotating seal spring. When the impeller is installed and the proper impeller clearance is set, the proper mechanical seal working height and spring tension will be set automatically. The rotating assembly should be pressed onto the drive sleeve only far enough that the entire bellows and face assembly are on the drive sleeve. Clean the seal faces with a cloth or paper towel to remove any lubricant that may be on top of the contact surface. If the pump came pre-assembled to a drive unit, 
then a piece of shim material will be needed. Shim material should be approximately 20 thousandths of an inch thick and 18 inches in length. Looking into the discharge port of the Flomax pump, you will see three holes in the housing. The one to the far right will be a small round cast hole, and the other two are finished machined rectangular slots. The middle hole or slot is where the shim material should be positioned. Place the impeller and drive sleeve assembly into the pump housing. Install the housing gasket on the housing. Install the adapter O-ring on the adapter if you have a newer model Flomax. Install the adapter onto the housing using care to orient the adapter correctly and tighten the six hex head bolts or nuts. When doing this, use caution to not contact the drive sleeve end with the stationary seal face. Doing so may damage the seal face. Install the drive sleeve clamp onto the drive sleeve. Position the drive sleeve clamp in the middle of the exposed drive sleeve length. Install the pedestal assembly by inserting the pedestal shaft into the drive sleeve and aligning the mounting bolt holes with the adapter holes. Insert and tighten the four hex head bolts to secure the pedestal assembly. The drive sleeve clamp bolts can now be tightened evenly to secure the drive sleeve to the pedestal shaft. This can be checked by visually inspecting the gap between the clamp halves to ensure even tightening. With the drive sleeve clamp in place and tightened evenly, the shim material can be removed from the discharge port of the housing. The pump should be rotated to ensure that rotation is free of rubbing or any scraping noise. If either of these occurs, then the shim should be reinstalled and the clearance should be verified again. Once the clearance is set and free of any rubbing or noise, your pump will be ready to be installed into your system.